hot flashes, weight gain, depression. Menopause can be a nightmare for women and everyone around them. Let's talk about it. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm your host, Michael Hunter, and this is my co-host, Elizabeth Atkins. Hello. My Healthy Mind is a show where we're tackling taboo topics. Nothing is off limits. We're telling stories of triumphs when people have overcome things like schizophrenia, bipolarism, obesity, human trafficking. Nothing is off limits. We talk about it so that people get comfortable talking about it and other people can heal. Elizabeth, what are we talking about today? Michael, we're talking about something that people do not like to talk about, menopause. We're talking about menopause in a way that provides action steps for people to cope with it and for their loved ones and coworkers to cope with it along with them. And it's so great because we have Coco, the radio personality from KISS FM 105.9. She's on the radio here in Detroit every morning and she is hilarious. She's a comedian. And so she's able to talk about this very serious topic in a way that can make us laugh and hear the message without getting overburdened by the shame and embarrassment of it. Absolutely, and I think that's a very good approach because you can take the comedy and say, hey, this is lighthearted enough to approach this topic, right. but make sure it is approached so that people can get better right. because we don't talk about menopause, right. but we're gonna talk about it on our show. Yes. And a lot of the men out there are gonna learn something too. Absolutely. We also have a Team Wellness Center clinical therapist, Cheryl Slate, who talks about the causes of menopause and the treatments, as well as coping skills. We all know somebody who's going through menopause, and this show is such a powerful tool to learn how to cope with it and get through it the best possible way. And we're gonna hear all about it after this break. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't wanna bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. We are this close. Of our mentality. To making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. This close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease. Ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you, is you. This close. If we donate now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Team Mental Health Services prides itself on going the extra mile for its members. And it was towards the sixth court date. Um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. You are in for a treat today, because we have Coco, the comedian and radio personality extraordinaire who comes on every morning in Detroit on 105.9 
Kiss FM with Mason, Tune Up, and Angie Starr. She makes us laugh, but today she's going to talk about something very serious, something that we need to talk about, menopause. <gasps> <laughs> welcome, Coco. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you invited me to be on the show because we have to talk about men o pause. It is very real. And if you're watching and you watch me in HD, I do look a little moist. It's a dewy moisture about to uh, happen. Just keep watching it. It's called a hot flash, people. It sort of feels like when your body, imagine just being wrapped up in a garbage bag, fellas, real fast, real hot for about five minutes and then they let it go. That's a hot flash. A gentleman imagine that. Just from like your chest to your feet, you know, and they sort of put a blow dryer under there and everything gets hot and then they take it off and you kind of land there slick like a fish. Yeah, hot flash. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but it's, Coco, don't people say that that's all in your head, menopause? No, it's not in your head. It is all over my body. It, um, and, and the serious part is, because people feel like it's, it's just something that you make up or something that's not real, they don't understand the dynamics of the hormones are actually changing. There is a change in your estrogen and your testosterone and emotionally you're impacted and you have crying spells and you have depression and all of those things. And if you don't have a good ph physician or a clinician to talk to, then you will think that it is all in your head but it is so very real. It will change what you're gonna to wear to an event. It will change the type of underwear you wear. It changes your interaction with other people because it's still one of those things that's so very, very taboo. Don't talk about it. No. <sighs> well, I, I actually was laughing a little bit when you first started talking, but I understand it's a very serious issue. Yes. But I'm laughing because I really can't relate, right? Yeah. So when I see somebody going through it or I'm interacting with somebody going through see, it. notice you said going through it. Yeah. Say the word with me. Menopause. Going through menopause. There we go. Yay. Okay. <laughs> see how easy it is? And the easier you say it, the more you say it, the easier it gets. Okay, so I, I don't have to just be appalled at this change in behavior. It's just natural. It is very natural and a lot of men don't believe it. But men go through menopause as well. They go through male menopause. So when you see a 60-year-old man with a bad hip and he's trying to get out of a Corvette, that's menopause. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So, Coco, tell us about what you go through. The hot flashes, mood oh, swings. Gosh. What is it? I go through, I have hot flashes, um, really intense hot flashes. Um, in the middle of the night, because I pajamas, I don't buy them. The only time I wear a gown or pajamas if I'm going out of town or I'm staying at a friend's house, and I really start off with them on. I mean, really, really, from my heart, I start off with a nightgown on. But in the middle of the night, when the flashes kick in, it's on the floor. I sleep with my sheet like a toga. It's sort of pulled up here between my legs, and it covers this part on, a, on an angle. And it, it keeps me up during the night. Because it's a cycle, you, you're thirsty, you're hot, you drink water, then you have to get up and go to the bathroom. Then you get back in the bed and you flash again. Then you wake up and you sit in the middle of the bed. Then you cool off. Then you drink some more water and you have to go back to the bathroom. So I sleep in sometimes two-hour increments. And so you're going through menopause now. Active. Active menopause. Very. Okay. How long has it been happening for you? Honestly, maybe about, I want to say six years maybe. Six years? Mm -hmm. And it, and, it, and, gets, and it gets more intense. And the intensity has heightened because I have fibroids. So with that being said, I have the fibroid issue going on and I have the menopause going on. And my physician wanted to make sure that I was willing to do what's necessary to eliminate the fibroids. And yes, I am. Wow. Well, we'll be back and we'll talk more about menopause after this. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. Of our mountain tea. To making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. This close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease. Ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. 
All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we donate now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. One in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually molested. I'm John Walsh, and I can tell you from personal experience that one person can make a difference, and that one person can be you. 1,200 abused or neglected children walk through the doors of CareHouse every year. CareHouse is a leader in the protection of children and treatment of victims, mending broken lives. See how you can get involved. Visit carehouse.org. It shouldn't hurt to be a child. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Team Mental Health Services prides itself on going the extra mile for its members. And it was towards the sixth court date. Um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Today we're talking about menopause and we're joined with Cheryl Slate, a clinical therapist. Cheryl, talk to us about how to deal with menopause from the mental health perspective, not necessarily the physical health side, but the mental health side. The person is going through it, and then someone like myself who may interact with people who are going through menopause. Well, um, there's two stages of menopause. There's perimenopause and menopause itself. Menopo perimenopause is when your periods are slowing down and lightening and sporadic. This is when depression kicks in. Um, it's very rare for depression to kick in after full menopause has been gone through, but it is very common to be during perimenopause. And you have mood swings, trouble sleeping, anger issues, and hot flashes can really mess with your head because you think that, that you know, no one's going to understand what you're going through with the physical part of it. And so what's the remedy? What should a woman do if she's experiencing all of these things and doesn't even know why? Well, if she feels that she's depressed and could be going through menopause or perimenopause, she says, see your gynecologist for, to find out, because they can test to see if you're going through perimenopause. And once you've found that out and you're still depressed, you could go see a mental health specialist or clinical therapist or psychologist. And what would happen then? They would work with you to, on how to manage your depression mm -hmm. and how to learn good sleep habits mm -hmm. and good nutrition and how to manage the anger. And is it possible to control some of those symptoms actually or you just have to learn coping skills? You, you need to learn coping skills. The medica there's medication that will help with the, the depression and there's also hormone therapy that helps with the hot flashes but they will start out with usually the hormone therapy and see if that works. And they, that takes two to four weeks to see if that's going to be effective. And then if, that, if not, then they'll add an antidepressant. And then if they add an antidepressant, it takes eight to six weeks for the medication to come to full level in your system. So I, there's different things you can do. You can use exercise, eat properly, get good sleep, and that will help you with the mood swings and the anger. Now, what about educating the people around you, your, your spouse, your brothers and sisters, your colleagues? Who wants to sit in a meeting and say, oh, pardon me, I'm going through menopause? I mean, that would make you feel even worse, wouldn't it? Because right. it's such a taboo topic. It's so uncomfortable. Right. Well, the, you take your husband or your, uh, your significant other with you to the doctors. 
let them get the same information that you're getting and be educated on the symptoms that you're going to go through and the psychological things that could happen like low self-esteem and as far as workplace goes it's a if there's somebody there that you can trust, let them know, because they can kind of run interference for you if you're having a hot flash or some mood swing at work. But you have to pick your support uh, system very carefully, because you don't want to, anyone that's going to make fun of it. Because that's the one thing women don't want, is for their symptoms and their feelings to be made fun of or be called old. Because you're already questioning their sexuality because of the changes their body they're going through. Mm -hmm. And it has a negative effect on sex drive for women, Yes, correct? it does. You lose your sex drive. Just like when men go through their menopause, they have a low testosterone level. They start to lose their sex drive also, and they become more interested in less, uh, how would you put it, masculine things. They start being more nurturing and around the home and that. But they... You need to do it together. You need to walk together through this and communicate. Communication is a huge, huge part of it. And, and because I can't relate to menopause personally, when I'm interacting with somebody and I see the strange behavior, what you're saying is don't overreact and don't accuse them of being different or having an attitude, if you will. Just be very patient and that kind of thing. And validate. Validate that you know that they're going through something and it's real for, the, for them but you can't understand it, but you're willing to support. Excellent. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Coming up, we'll have Cheryl and Coco talking about coping skills for menopause. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. We are this close. Of our mentality. To making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. This close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease. Ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Stress. Depression and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Team Mental Health Services prides itself on going the extra mile for its members. And it was towards the sixth court date. Um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Now we get to talk to Coco and Cheryl about how to cope with menopause, giving us some real action steps we as women can take who are going through menopause and help our families endure it. Tell us, Cheryl, let's start with you. What can we do um, to help people get through some coping skills for women? Um, well, coping skills would be to go into therapy and um, get it out, talk about it, where you know that nobody's going to judge. Because when you're in therapy, you're not judged, and it's the best place to let your feelings out, how you're feeling depressed, how you're feeling inadequate, and what you want to do. A lot of women change their careers and change things that they're doing in their life at that time of their um, life during perimenopause and menopause 
they'll change the whole career to something different. They need support. Um, they need to be communicate. Communication is a big thing. Be honest and communicate with your family and your friends and your coworkers and your spouse that this is what you're going through. This is how you're feeling. And if you seem crazy one day, it's because you can't help it and you're sorry, but just bear with me. Perfect. And, and Coco, you are a professional um, comedian. You're a celebrity and you have pretty thick skin. So has that been a help to you going through menopause or has it not played a factor at all? You know what, I'm, I'm very honest and, and that's one of the things that, you know, I disarm the situation by being very honest and I share with my family and, and my friends and by me being a comedian, I incorporate that into my stand-up routine. But I also use it as a teaching moment or a teachable moment to share with other women like, this is real. Cheryl talked about medication and things earlier, and I've taken the, the hormone pills, and I currently take Xanax. And I take Xanax because some days I am like this, like a cat on a hot tin roof, and, and, and it, it brings me down and it mellows me out where I'm able to function and I'm able to do things that are normal because it, it's real. And, and my friends, some of them are along this road and this journey with me, and some of them are leading up to that. But it is so real, it is very important that you communicate, that you share, that you use it as a teachable moment. And especially in dating, sharing it with the man that, you know, um, he's, why you got your own bottle of water? Because it's half frozen and I'm gonna rub it on my face <laughs> and keep myself cool and I got my tissue and all those things. So it's, it's important that we take away the stigma and the stereotype that's associated with going through the change of life. Once we do that, we're okay. Coco, I'm so proud of you for having the courage to speak about this the way you, you. do, and you're a professional communicator, and you're yeah. such a powerful inspiration to other women, Thank because you. most will not speak up like that. So can you give us some actual lines of dialogue that women can use to say in a workplace or to their friends and family? What specific words can they say? I think you need to sit down. My grandson is, is a teenager, and when we're together, and he's really involved, and he swims and plays the cello and, and all of those things, but when he's around me, he can see my face getting flushed and, okay, grab my stop at the gas station, let me get you some water, whatever. So it's about making yourself transparent and having that conversation. You know, um, you don't have to go into details with your coworker, but you can tell him, you know, I'm feeling a little indifferent right now. We'll readdress this conversation and we'll come back to that. I think we need to honestly open the doors and talk about it because it's so serious. Some women have had, you know, nervous breakdowns because they keep all of that bottle in because they're embarrassed and shamed and they don't share it with the physician and they don't share it with the family and they're at home and they're just tearing themselves apart because nobody wants to talk about the elephant in the room. And, and I can appreciate that, Cheryl, because the topic has been so taboo you know, as a man, as a man, you know, I'm not invited to the hen party when it's just ladies talking. <laughs> but so I don't get education or candid conversation about menopause, or I haven't been invited into the conversation. So, how can we help get ourselves invited if we anticipate that it may be happening and they're not so forthcoming? Ask some questions. Say, you know, I I see you're not feeling quite up to par today. What's going on? And like I said before. Be willing to say you don't understand, but you're there to support. That's very, very important because women want to be vet their feelings validated. They want you to really know that this is something they're really going through. It's not just made up in their mind. It's a physical, chemical change in their body. Awesome. Cheryl, Coco, thank you so much for thank joining you. us on My Healthy you're Mind. Welcome. And we're going to talk more about this topic after this break. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. Of all my team team. 
to making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. This close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. One in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually molested. I'm John Walsh, and I can tell you from personal experience that one person can make a difference, and that one person can be you. 1,200 abused or neglected children walk through the doors of CareHouse every year. CareHouse is a leader in the protection of children and treatment of victims, mending broken lives. See how you can get involved. Visit carehouse.org. It shouldn't hurt to be a child. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. What an interesting show today, Elizabeth. Yes. Menopause. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you took away from today's show. Well, Michael, unfortunately, I did not know that the symptoms can be so severe, especially regarding depression. And so I'm excited that Cheryl said that lifestyle, such as exercising, eating healthy, meditating, all the things that I do, can help offset and prevent the severity of some of these symptoms. And I think it was a really good topic because it allowed men to learn that it's okay to be supportive, to yes. talk about it, to even draw the topic out of your partner if you suspect that it's happening yes. or something is happening, right. but be very supportive and at the same time make sure you're not condescending. Right, right. Open communication is the key, key to success with this. And they encourage us to talk about it, right? And that's exactly what we do on My Healthy Mind. We talk about taboo topics. So this, what more taboo topic is there than menopause? Because it engenders such shame and embarrassment and low self-esteem and feeling crazy. And so today's show is so powerful. I love it. And I got to admit, I was intrigued with the hint that there may even be a such thing as male menopause. Yes. So if we can learn to be very empathetic to our women, then I think that if that is happening for us, then there's hope for us too. Yes, absolutely. We're so excited to hear from you what your comments are about our show today about menopause. So please tweet us. Hit us up on Facebook, send us an email at myhealthymind.com. We want to hear your comments and questions. And please stay tuned for our show next week. We're going to be talking about mental health court and how people who commit crimes who are mentally ill can get special services that enable them to get the help they need instead of committing more crimes. So we will see you next week on My Healthy Mind. <laughs>